And there was one quote in there that got my attention where, you know, we get, I think we all want the We want to see the Reds win and we want to see them kick some teams ass. And this is one of my favorite quotes yesterday from the introductory press conference, Terry Francona. I think players like being coached. I think they enjoy working hard, but you got to be organized and, and we will be, and we'll get after it. But, but, you know, people talk about having fun. I think what I think is in being in, enjoyable is playing the game right and, and, to be honest, trying to kick somebody's ass. That's what I think is enjoyable. I think I we think all think that's enjoyable. <laughs> I, I think we that. can all agree. I think we can all agree uh, that, that, you know, kicking somebody's ass can be enjoyable. No doubt about it. And the Reds have been the, the team on the opposite, uh, opposite end of that for far too long. For far too long. And you hear that energy. And you, by the way, you see, like, he's a very loose, fun guy. But he goes, we're going we're gonna to get after it. Like, there, yep. that was a – you could just feel it. Like, he's jacked to be back. I think the fans are feeding off that. The media is feeding off that. But that was – of all the clips that we're sharing and we'll share moving, out, uh, moving on throughout the show, that one caught my attention the most. We're going to get after it. We're going to be organized, and we're going to kick some ass. I think that right there, that's the clip that – that'll be my favorite for the rest of time as we head into this 2025 season because, like, I felt that energy. And baseball is not an energy sport. You don't no. feel energy a lot of times. Like, football – we talk about Dan Campbell all the time, yeah. an energy guy. I'm going to bite some kneecaps. This guy's a weirdo. But I want to run through a brick wall for him, right? Like, Zach Taylor is a very soft-spoken individual. You don't feel like you want to run through a brick wall for him, right? In football, baseball, you don't ever get that. We're getting that right now with Terry Francona. And that's the first time in a, hearing a baseball manager speak where I felt like, hell yeah. Like, I can't, I can't wait for baseball season. Now I can't wait for red season. Baseball season's not done. The winning teams are playing right now. But yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, we you had that conversation mean. before the show. We <laughs> said, did, did the Reds win the offseason? And then we had to take a step back and realize that the season's still going on for a lot of teams. Well, <laughs> yeah, but we don't watch that. In case you didn't watch any playoff baseball yesterday. Baseball's regional, dude. Well, you just ruined my wow. you ruined my point. You ruined my point, but that's okay. I, I did watch I did I did watch the Tigers game at Eli's, and I uh, responsibly I live bet the Tigers before the top of the ninth and plus money. That felt great to hit. Felt great. But back to our, our manager. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I listen. I don't think David Bell was ever going to say. I hate to keep comparing to David Bell, but you have to. He's that's the most recent manager. That's the re, yeah. That's that's why this move was made. That, and again, I I don't I don't hate David Bell. I don't dislike David Bell. I think he did a solid job with what he was given. A manager's job. A, a manager can only be as good as the talent around him. I will say Terry Francona did a lot with teams that did not spend money. Um, so if you're a fan, if you're a fan of the Reds and you're saying, well, we don't spend money, we don't do any of this, Terry Francona has had success at that. He's he's done the exact thing and he's taken them to the peak that Nick Crawl likes to talk about. So that's the that's the biggest takeaway I have. And and to him hear him say, I want to go kick somebody's ass on the baseball field. Um, that I think that's fun. I I, I want to have a fun season again. This season killed every fun that we had from 2023. I want fun again in 2025. Yeah, and you you know you mentioned um, obviously when it comes to that uh, you know he's managed teams who don't spend a lot of money. Yep. Uh, I know me and you spoke yesterday. You said, hey, the big question you have is like, okay, well, you know what what about you, you know what uh, what about maybe some of the payroll conversations that they had? He said they had a four or five hour conversation. Was payroll brought up? You know, was it talked about? You know, were there some assurances made to kind of help him feel comfortable about managing and taking over the Cincinnati Reds team? He was asked about that. Here's his response. Terry, this organization hasn't won a playoff series since 1995. Were you given any promises that they will put uh, certain player, uh, players on the field for you, or did you ask for that? Uh, did you ask for them to go out and get X amount of players to, uh, before you took the job? Uh, never even brought it up. We're going to start our meetings this afternoon after I get rid of this and put on something I can actually breathe in. Um, you're going you're gonna to hopefully find... I hope you never hear me talk about payroll, things like that. What I care about is the players that we have trying to get them to be the best baseball team they can be, whether they're 20, whether they're 30, or whether they're 40. And there'll never be an excuse when we play a game or lose a game on our youth or our payroll. Once the game starts, it doesn't matter. 
I, and again, I know what my job is. I don't need to be the general manager. I don't need to be the president. I just want to try to be the best manager I can be. All right. I wanted him to say a little bit more like, yeah, we're going to go spend. We knew he wasn't <laughs> going to say that. We knew he wasn't going to say that. He wasn't going to give away all the information that's said behind closed doors. Truly, deep down, I still believe that the Reds weren't promising him that we're going to go be a top 10 spender in baseball. But I, I do believe that assurances were made that, hey, we're going to do what we, we have to to improve this roster. And to be fair with all of us in this room, not once have we ever really screamed from the mountaintop that this team needs to be top 10 in spending. Uh, I don't, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but like, I don't think that they need to be top 10 in spending, but the, the spending needs to reflect that they are efforting to fill holes on the roster and improve. And at times they've done that. I'm not going to act like this team is the guardians where they absolutely spend no money yeah. uh, year in and year out. This team has spent money. You can question where the money goes at times, but they're willing to fork over money. It's not as if this organization is as it's not the cheapest organization in baseball. It's actually not even close. Um, but it is interesting hearing him say that that is one way to look at it. He's like, Hey, and that's kind of like the guardians. I bring up their payroll, but while they're winning, no one's talking about their payroll. In fact, it's turned, it's spun into a positive. Look how little we spend and look how competitive we are. As much as I said that's bad for baseball and I don't like that, that's only because I know that our team doesn't need more excuses not to, not to spend. But, hey, if the Reds are a playoff team year in and year out and they're winning their division and have the best, you know, fighting for the best record in baseball and they have bottom five in spending every year, I guess I wouldn't be against that. I'll be a hypocrite. I don't care. Uh, but it was interesting hearing him say that payroll, he hopes he never talks payroll because he never wants that to be an excuse. We're not good because we don't spend. It was interesting hearing that perspective. I took a lot of people – Saw a lot of people taking this as a, a Sherman that they were going to spend this offseason. I ne didn't necessarily think of it the same way. I think a lot of people think Terry Francona is going like, to go into the front office and say, y you have to spend to support this team. But if he was going to do that, why didn't he do that in Cleveland when they weren't spending any money and he was able to win anyway? I, I think Terry Francona is very confident in the core of this roster, and that's why he came. I do think the Reds, I fully expect them to supplement this roster with pieces. But for all of us to go – like off the deep end here and think we're going to go attack the top of the free agent market now that we have T Terry Francona. It's not going to change that drastically. We're, we're going to hopefully try to open a window here to compete for a World Series, and that requires some free agent signings. But I don't think the Reds are going to do a complete 180 on organizational philosophy and go throw $300 million of Juan Soto. Like, this is going to be a virtually a similar Reds offseason. Just you hope that you can hit on some of those guys. Instead of misses like Candelario and Nustakis, you get a few Castellanos, and then you'd be in a pretty good spot. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what to exactly expect from the Reds on the free agent market, but I don't know how much we're going to need if Terry Francona is able to get the most out of a lot of the guys we have here already. So, certainly still very excited about, about Francona, but I, I didn't necessarily take this quote the same as um, a lot of other people. Yeah, I saw – I. The, 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 the reaction to this when we, when we tweeted it last night or yesterday afternoon – I, I, there was definitely two ways. There was there was the one way that was, oh well, great. The David Bell stuff is going to come right back because nobody's going to spend any money and the roster is going to be the same. And then I also saw the other side where it was right off that initial quote. I hope I never have to talk about payroll, and people took that as we're going to spend we're going to spend money, yeah. so I'm never going to talk about it. I think you can take about I think you can take it both ways. I think you can take that quote both ways. Um, and I'm going to say that the Reds are going to spend money because if they didn't, he wouldn't be here, and we all know that. So I, if he said, in which he did, if he says that when games start, he's going to be ready to manage a winning team, that's what I care about. Yep. That's all I care about. The money thing matters, but we all know that we're behind, well behind the eight ball when it comes to spending money in Major League Baseball. There's uh, a gap that can't be filled. They're, the, the Yankees are the Yankees, and we are the Cincinnati Reds. It's us. It's the Athletics. It's the Guardians. It's the it's the Royals. It's the it, it's the it's the Tampa Bay Rays. We're all in the bottom together. Now the teams I just listed, the teams I just mentioned there, some of them have been not terrible over the past couple of years. The Royals are in the playoffs. The, the series is tied one to one against the the New York Yankees, and they just won the series before against the Baltimore Orioles. There is a method to this madness. The Reds last year, and I, I still don't think it clicked. For a lot of the people that wanted David Bell fired, the whole roster was decimated. That wasn't the roster that was promised at the beginning of the year. It wasn't. Saying that, and, and you saw it last year with the last month when we didn't have a starting pitcher available. Not one. We played an entire month and a half of baseball without a starting pitcher until Rhett Lauder got the call. 
So I, I, I think this year, if Terry Francona is going to have a healthy roster, that's all that matters to me. So with that, too, so the, and again, you talked about it. Like I was curious people's reaction when he said that. For one, if those assurances were made, you're not going to put that out there because then that puts pressure on the front office right, to spend right. money. The second thing is, is it's one of those things where – Go win baseball games. We don't talk about money as much. When you lose baseball games, it's, well, you're not even spending money to get good players. So, of course, you get what you pay for as far as that goes. You know, and you look at the Guardians, too. My big argument on that has always been, like, everyone's like, well, why does it matter? Why do you care how much they're spending? If they're winning, they don't have to spend money. And I'm like, yes, I think it's impressive that they're able to put a World Series or a, a top record in baseball contender out there without spending money. But imagine if you're that good and you develop that well and, you know, you're, you're able to, you know, have a good, uh, you know, franchise to be able to, to continue win at that level without spending money. Imagine how much better you would be if you did spend money. Like, there's right. still levels to go up. It's not like they're at the very top of their game. They could even be better. That's why I'm like, as a Guardians fan, I would actually be frustrated about that. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wear that as a badge of pride of, oh, my gosh, look how good we are, and we don't even spend money. I would be frustrated saying, hey, we still have deficiencies that we could have used that money we're not spending on and made us a very, very – probably the most complete team in baseball. So for the Reds – to Jacob's point, I don't think they're going to go out and drop a ton of money this offseason. But what I do think that Terry Francona, uh, you know, his aura that's going to matter the most when it comes to that front office, when they do need something, they're going to get it. Doesn't mean oh, we need a starting pitcher. They're not going to go get the best starting pitcher, but they're going to go get a veteran pitcher that can yeah. come in and, and help fill the gaps. If they're, you know, weak in the outfield and they need to go get somebody, they're going to go get it, right? Like, I, I don't think it's one of those where we're going to go revamp the entire roster and go put, you know – 25 million year guys on every single position that we can find it's just going to be we're going to spend money when it's needed and not just oh well we have a guy that's in double a that we're hoping could fill that gap here in two years i think they'll just be they'll approach problems with more urgency and i think that's going to be the biggest change with francona uh leading the way yeah. nonetheless